and welcome to RTF Sports Talk Friday Edition, presented to you by this piece of wood. You could probably use it to build something if you wanted to. As usual, your host, Matthew Lau here. I'm joined today with Buck Nasty the Third and Grand Hefe, back from his tour with his number one recording Germany album rock band. How are you guys doing today? Uh, doing all right to be back. Uh, been gone for about a week or so. It's good I, to be back in the fold. And I am better as all can get out right now. You should be. You should yeah. be. Ugh. Just, just, just be so because of so many reasons. So, um, <laughs> thank you, Bob Sutton, for being horrible. Oh, let's not start there. But definitely glad to have Billy back. He's been doing crazy things. He was he was swimming in the Nile. He started a a, a garage band and it went worldwide in three point two days. I mean, he's just really been doing some things out there, so I'm glad he could take time out of his busy schedule to join us here on RTF Friday edition. Let's dive Any time right- for some good friends. Exactly. <laughs> let's dive on into the show here. Let's see what we got going. Let's start with, let's start with the, the open wound. Let's start with what's causing Buck Nasty the Third over here so much pain. Chiefs Chargers recap. Chiefs pulled off a comeback win 29 to 28 on a two point conversion. I think with you mean the Chargers. Seconds left. Yeah, Chargers, whatever. I, I just wanted to give you false hope. <laughs> Both are 11-3 and three now. Chargers come back and win 29-28 after being down 28-14. What's your takeaway from this, Billy? Um, I, I, I thought that the Chargers play exactly like the team that I picked to win that AFC West division at, at the start of the season. I knew this team would be good. I, this, this was the season. Mevin Gordon had took that leap last year. And before he got hurt this year, he's really been – he 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 was really killing it. The Chargers are three and zero oh since he's been hurt. Uh, so imagine getting him back next week. And I was without Keenan Allen. Uh, my biggest takeaway was, uh, and you said something on Sunday in the group chat that I say all the time, and that's you 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 cannot play to to win, or or play not to lose the game. And that's what I thought the Kansas City Chiefs did. You were up fourteen, um, with under four minutes left. And instead of giving the ball to your MVP, the, the guy who may be the MVP of the league, uh, but definitely your MVP, instead of giving him the ball, letting him make the plays, you know, uh, they decided to, to run the ball. And and I get it. You know, that's the, I guess, the quote-unquote smart thing to do. But you had a running back or a running game that was so far last, last night. You had 60 rushing yards all game, three-and-a-half uh, yard carry per average, and and – you telling me that was going to ice the game against that Chargers defense? I, I I I just didn't see that happening. So for me, I think more play calling caused the 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 Chiefs to to lose this game. Well, my counterpart on the other side, he's going to blame the defense, and I and I I just don't think that was it. Let's go, Buck Nasty. Well, uh, I I I did blame the defense this past night, but re-watching the game, re- and then rethinking it, that that Chargers team is a pretty good team. They are a very, very – they have – that they are a a well-put-together to, team. Think about this. Their, their number one wide receiver, he went out in, like in the second quarter, I believe it was, left with that hip injury. Uh, they didn't have their start. They didn't have their starting tailback. They didn't have a backup tailback. They were down two offensive linemen as well, and they still beat the Kansas City Chiefs 29-28. Uh, like, along with Phillip Rivers throwing two, 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 two picks, Patrick Mahomes doing what Patrick Mahomes does, even though he, like, he only did throw for 243 for two scores. But that, that's still, you know, that's a pretty solid, solid day for most quarterbacks here. But – and kind of, kind of alluding back to what uh, Mr. Hatton said here, uh, the defense did kind of give a give away that game because, like, as soon as the uh, Chargers scored that final touchdown with like five, five four, or five seconds left, and they were going to go for two, they knew that that like that D like that team they were on the ropes, and they went into overtime versus a Kansas City Chiefs and a Patrick Patrick. Mahomes led led team, they wouldn't have, have a chance. So uh, the Chargers, de- like the Chargers play 
play calling on that final play definitely gets a good, a good, a good kudos and a thumbs up. But my overall takeaway from the game is a, a Chargers could could definitely represent the AFC and the champion or in the su- su- oops, Super Bowl after that win last night. See, I think blaming the Chiefs defense is like blaming Blake Bortles for the Jaguars' troubles. Like you knew that was coming in. This is no secret. We've had this discussion, you know. But historic. But earlier in the season, the Chiefs said, "Okay, our defense is going to be horrible. Patrick Mahomes is going to play great. Andy Reid said we're not going to let our foot off the pedal." So I'm gonna have to go with Billy on this one. You knew your defense was suspect, and I know you got Justin Houston back and Eric Berry, but that doesn't change the entire eleven that you've had when you were getting in shootouts earlier in the season. So for for them to just sit back and say, hey, take this ball, take this ball, here's a handoff, here's the safe play, I think was reckless on the Chiefs' offense part and a bit arrogant to think that your defense was somehow going to change its identity than what it's been the entire season it, it is absurd, it, it really. And in today's NFL, where you saw it on the last drive, you can blame the refs if you want. These rules are set to make offensive production easier. Whoa, those – the, the – the, those flags were crap on the No, on, no, they weren't. Like, but like see, that's on, the thing. Like he wasn't. either side. No, but, I mean, you can say that, but by the letter of the rule, they were not bad calls. Okay, you so there was no offensive gra- pass interference on that on that uh, touchdown pass? No, he, he did not fully by, – by what they've called, he did not extend that hand. Uh, and, that arm but, was but see, fully – But, you're wanting, to, but you're, wanting to go he, with, you're, you're wanting to go with calls that weren't made. Let's go with the calls that were made that everybody's complaining about. When when you you cannot pull down a receiver's arm like the DB did, you can't do that. You don't do that. The play's different. It's so. It, it, and Matthew, just a lot of a lot of people also don't mention Phillip Rivers' knee being down, clearly being down. And he's still getting hit. Uh, that that should have been called. Uh, but, the, that wasn't called. Okay, so and, but that's and, fine. And, that was a bang bang play. Let's though. not talk about the. But but you guys know this, dude. We're in week fifteen. This has been the this has been the storyline the entire season. My bigger point, and I'm siding with you on this, Billy. Yeah, yeah, why, yeah, yeah. Why? Why are you? You know that the off that the refs have made plays and made calls that say we want offensive points, we want drives to result in at least field goals, but preferably touchdowns. You do this, and you take a seven point lead with what three minutes left, and you go into hibernation, slow burn mode. That's absurd. I, I was, I was hard on the Patriots, and the Patriots had a much better chance of pulling off the win versus the Dolphins considering they were going to get the ball back with eight seconds. But I was much harder on them, and there was less time. So, and your defense, Mike, that game, in that second half, Phillip Rivers, he, he flipped the switch. Yeah. Well, you know, he uh, had a great second half. Yeah. yeah, why would you want to give him back the ball that quick? I, I, I just don't – I just don't – I don't understand that Pat- logic, you know. <laughs> Patrick Mahomes barely throws interceptions. Why are you not letting the magic man ride the hot hand and get this done. And plus, let me give all the props in the world to what Billy said there with Phillip Rivers and the entire Chargers offense. They, they played a beautiful mixture. And I, I've not seen many teams be able to mix this as beautifully as they did last night of productive, high-flying offense while killing the clock. Every snap that yes. the Chargers took came when you thought they were going to delay a game. And maybe to, to your all's points about the rest missing calls, Maybe there was a delay or game or two missed. But they were playing so methodically. So typically when teams try to – like we saw it last week with the Ravens. They tried to take the ball out of Patrick Mahomes' hands by having a tough defense, making them earn everything. But Lamar Jackson just didn't have the repertoire to get it done. Phillips Rivers and Phillip Rivers and that offense did it so magically. Every snap, making every call, pl- dragging out everything so perfectly – where you, you're almost shocked they threw for so many yards. You would think when they throw for that many yards, Patrick Mahomes is going to get a lot of production. As someone who has Patrick Mahomes, Tyreek Hill, and Travis Kelsey on my fantasy team in the playoffs, I was very bummed yesterday. The second quarter went like this, and I'm pretty sure that the Chiefs had like one possession in the entire second quarter. So, uh, you know, yes, we can blame a lot of things. That defense has been – questionable from the very first point of the season the the refs may have missed some plays but the refs also made some made some calls that why are you surprised they've been making them calls for 15 weeks but let's give a lot of props to what the chargers did well also if you if you roll back to that final drive that the chargers had the the uh i believe like at 
there were two times in that series where it was fourth and eight and fourth and ten, and the Chiefs they give up a middle slant for fifteen, sixteen yards two times. Like that, that like how, how do you not take take away the middle of the field in like in those spots? Like that is just poor defensive of, of, of like play calling there. Well, I mean, Mike, it's called beautiful offense. It, it, it's really what it is. It's, a, it's it's what they it's what the Kansas City Chiefs do with, with with Tyreek Hill. It's hard to press a small, fast, quick guy if he's not on the line of scrimmage. And now you're trying to guess where he's going to go. If you look at where Fuller was uh, on on that play with Travis Benjamin, and I watched Tra- Travis Benjamin for four years play at the University of Miami, and that's what he does. They had him off the line of scrimmage. He come off, he give him a little stutter. Kyle Fuller don't know where he's going. He don't know whether he, he he's going to cut in. He don't know where he's going to cut out. And what does he do? He go right around him. Beautiful throw by, by Phillip Rivers. It's just great offense. And 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 as Matthew said, this is, the, this is the day where they make rules for these guys, you know. If I'm already off the line of scrimmage, by the time I get to you, I'm already about five yards. You can no longer put your hands on me. It, so it, 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 it's, it's, it's beautiful play calling. See, and I'm going to go like this is where I have my problem with people blaming the ref. And if you want to break down every call that was or wasn't made, I'm sure you guys can both make great points. But it's like dogs shouldn't bite people. But if you know for a fact that there's a dog that's going to bite you, and you proceed to try to pet it anyway because it shouldn't bite you, you're you're you're, you're bad. That's, that's bad on you. That's your fault. And I'm going to go the same way with the refs. You know the refs are going to call these. I'm actually surprised that they didn't call the helmet to helmet. With the Chiefs on Phillip Rivers. That's the one I was talking about earlier. Okay, so yeah. So I, I'm actually surprised that wasn't a call. So you, the Chiefs actually lucked out, right or wrong. The Chiefs lucked out to even get an, a, an opportunity to get the pass interference to set them up on goal line. Uh, a couple of interesting facts that have, no, have nothing to do with anything. But I think that if, that has to be the most times that Joe Buck or any committing crew or commentating crew has said the word Williams. How many Williams were playing last night? The Chiefs yeah. had two in the backfield. There's two running back. The, the Chargers had two receivers named Williams. Throw in a couple of Benjamins. It felt like I was watching the Williams show last night. <laughs> something yeah, I, they got a bunch of Williams. And something I find very interesting, too, is, is this. They've always talked about the quarterback class of 2004. And I really think it's interesting how this is being written. At the beginning of this 2004 class, Big Ben was the guy that came out. I think he won a Super Bowl, what, in his second year? He did, second it, year. he did it again four or five years later. The man looked like he was going to surpass Tom Brady for a amount of rings. Uh, hasn't really done anything since. Eli popped up there in the middle. Eli kind of struggled in the end. He's kind of struggling now. I think, he's, I think it's fair to say Eli be the first of that 04 class to probably get the boot. But look at Char- – look at, and, and then Phillips is the one that has no rings and tends to be forgotten. But look how he's playing in his career. Some of those passes didn't look like they should be passes, and they were beautiful passes. He threw – he had one coming from his – I mean, you can talk about you want Patrick Holmes and some beautiful things. But some of these passes that Phillip Rivers – he reminds you of just your uncle on Thanksgiving Day out here throwing silly passes. I'm, I'm surprised one didn't come from behind his back. Like hey, look, he, he was lollipopping it. He, he's lollipopping He's throwing it from his hip. He, he, he's contorting his body to get a three-yard slant out. I mean – Props to him, and he's not going to get them respect because he doesn't have the rings and the hard, the hardware that uh, Eli and, and Ben have. But I think he's going to have a longer career, and I think we're going to see it in these next couple of years. If, if if my Patriots can't win the Super Bowl, I would definitely like to see Philip get it done. Just to add to some points here, guys, Kansas City Chiefs they they have ran two hundred or two thousand two hundred seventy seven seven plays so far this season, and they've had a hundred a hundred and twenty five penalties a, a for them, the on the second team here, you have the Buffalo Bills. They had, they ran two thousand six hundred and and like eleven plays, and they've had one hundred and seven penalties against them. So you're telling, so like I really feel like s- something is weighing against the Chiefs here. Just just I'm, just just throwing that out there. I mean, I'm sure that the the Packers could hang their whole season on two bad plays. I mean, two penalties. That's just what the NFL is too now. I mean, to, if you're going to continue to blame the ref, you might as well stop watching football because 
penalties against I'm the defense not, are. Go- I, I I am not blaming the rest, but at some point you have to let the flow of the game happen it's, and not but, call it penalty every play in the fourth quarter or the third quarter. But we've been saying this. Me and Billy have been talking about this since week one. That's not the future of the NFL. The future of the NFL, you want flowing? You want flowing NFL plays? Then everything needs to be a touchdown because you're not going to get – the future of the NFL is 50 points a game. Hard hits, aggressive cornerback play, attacking the ball in the air. Is just going to result in more flags over the next couple of years. It won't be hard. It won't be hard, hard hits because everybody complains about hard hits now. That's what I'm saying. No, that's what I'm saying. The, the hard hitting and, and this, these plays are going to be gone. Like, if, if you hit somebody hard, if you cover somebody rough, if you make a big tough play on the ball in the air, you're going to get a penalty. That's, what, that's, that's, that's the life of the NFL. All right, guys. Let me kind of stay in the NFL. The Chargers and the Chiefs both are 11 and 3. One team's going to win the division. One team's going to find themselves in the wild card. I'm all for rivalries. I'm all for location. You know, you don't want you don't want one team traveling to the east every other week. But should we get rid of the divisions when it comes to playoff seating, Billy? I think so because you rob a lot of teams because you're telling me that this one thing right here is the only thing that matters, and I can have another team that's 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 not as good as me. Let's take the the the, the Colts if, if if they get in or may, who's who's winning that division? That the Texans is winning that division, correct? Yeah, the Texans currently. So let's just say the Pittsburgh Steelers who won't finish with a better record than the than the the, the Chargers. Now they get to host the playoff game while I'm traveling. <laughs> The whole time when when I got the second best record in the uh, in the whole uh, uh, conference, so yeah, I think we need to throw away the divisions. Just let the best teams be the best teams, and and everything else is uh, settle uh, settle it out, just like the the NBA do. Mike, what about you? No, I I like how the division is is like set up because then you have those those teams out that 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 never have a chance to really make a splash just because of the teams they play in the regular season here uh like if you have a you know those like those four teams all always playing each other it makes for great tv to watch like it makes up for a great chatting at the end of the day and Usually, the teams that come out of the division and like and win are the better teams. So, so you could keep the divisions. I have no problem with that. But the fact that you're going to have a team, let's let's say in theory Pittsburgh ends up in the third seed and Houston drops to the fourth seed, you're going to have the second best team in the AFC or even the best team. Well, they couldn't be. You're going to have arguably the second best team in the AFC behind the Chiefs with a let's say thirteen and three record, twelve and four record. You're going to have them traveling to Pittsburgh while, let's say, the Texans are 10-6, and six, get to host a game? Uh, to me, that's absurd. And another point to that, this, this is why they hide behind division winners, but division games aren't the most important thing. You could have one team win all six division games but finish 6-10, and 10, and you could have another team lose all six division games, go 0-6 in the division, but if they go 10-6, and six, they're to the division champions? And they haven't even won a division game. That's no, absurd. no, that doesn't make sense because yes, it does. No, it does. It makes plenty of sense, Mike. But go ahead. No, go ahead. no, 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 no. Because the Chiefs, they, they, they have the best division record, and like they will, and like they, they, they have already won that that. Division because of no, they have many, Yes, they have. No, the, they, they have it, Mike. Mike, they, they have no shirt division. Last night, no, that's, that's fine. Then, <laughs> then you're buying a fake shirt. Yes, if it's a tie, if both the Chiefs and the Chargers finish thirteen and three, the most divisions will win. But if the if the Chargers finish thirteen and three and the Chiefs win twelve and four, but the Chiefs' other loss is out of the division, the Chargers are going to win that division. If if you take if the Chiefs went ten and six and lost every division game. And the Chargers went six and ten, but all six wins were in the division. The Chiefs would win that division with the better record. Better yes. record. Yes. Better record. Better record is the first criteria for winning your division. So you could, if, if divisions matter so much, make them matter. 
Give me division wins then. It's a good point, Matthew. It's a pretty All good right. point. Well, we're gonna move on to a little quicker, little quicker pace topics here. These are just some kind of fun. Give me a. I'll give you thirty seconds to a minute on each side. If be, if if Kyler Murray was at Alabama and everybody got a fresh start, what string would he be, Billy? Uh who that's tough. If if Tua is still there, just yeah. like it is now, Every, everybody's there. They they all come in. They're all three freshmen. <laughs> they're equally as talented. They're all as talented as they are today, but they're all you know obviously. And this year he would have started go, third string. I go. But, um, I go second. Uh, right, I, I, I just think Tua is, is 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 a killer. I don't think Murray would be on the football team to be honest, because like he sees that competition that Addy has with. Uh, with those two other quarterbacks, he would have he he would have per, he would have perfected his baseball skills more. So, but if he, if he would have decided I'm going to ride this out, uh, then he would, he would have been third string. You think so? If they would have uh, came in, if he I, I get what you're saying, Mike. If he would have came in this year, where um, Jalen Hurts has only got, already got you a title, two of won you a title last year. Obviously, with that, he would be in third. But if everybody would have came out the same. If this would have been a whole – say say Tom Brady was out there winning for him last year, and then this year they had to evaluate all the talents based off solely talent. You think he'd still be third behind Hurts? Yeah, I I think so, just simply just because of his height. And then uh, he just doesn't look like a quarterback figure in my eyes. So Ooh, interesting. Man, that's tough. Yeah. That's tough, Mike. Interesting. All right, moving on here. The Toronto Raptors can win the NBA title, Billy. Not a chance. Full strength, Steph, KD, Clay, Draymond, Boogie Cousins. No, not a chance. All right, Mike. The key word there says if they're full strength. They are starting to prove that they are injury prone. Steph Curry has been injured almost every year for the last what three or four years, as 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 if I if I remember correctly here. Uh, so the romp so the said so the rompers the rap rappers have a really good. Pretty good shot of winning the finals. Okay. Mike, we touched on this a little bit. I'll give you some more floor time on this next question. Billy, who is the best team in college basketball today? Duke. Uh, I don't I, – I, man, listen, when these guys are, are playing serious, when they're playing, uh, you know, competition, these guys show R.J. Barrett may be the best player in the, in, in the country. I still like Zion for the college game. I don't think anybody – and, and, and college can 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 uh, handle him, you know. Cam Reddish, Jones, and 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 I I just think Coach K is in a different a different realm right now. Uh, Mike and I'm gonna have to go with what I said on Tuesday. I think the the Nevada Wolfpack is the best team. Yes, they do. Blue Devils have the best talent, but Nevada has the best team. So if Duke and Nevada play today on a neutral court, who wins? I think it's going to be Nevada. <laughs> that would be that would be an interesting one. I, I, they I, will, I, I, here is how they will beat Duke. They'll get Zion and foul foul trouble early, and like he'll and then like he will have to sit out the you know eight seven to eight minutes in the first half, and then he will foul out with like three or four. Three or four, 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 four minutes left in the game, and then that, and then that is when they ex- that that is when they expose the Duke Blue Devils. <laughs> that is that is a rough one. Now, to me, I, I think Duke is the team with the better players. I think the best team one through ten is probably Michigan or Gonzaga. Um, I, I don't know if they can beat if if Michigan could beat Duke. I know that if you're playing Duke. There's like to, to Mike's point on this. There's three players you could take out in theory by fouls, and you'd stand a pretty good chance. Michigan, you'd probably have to take out their whole entire starting five uh, when they're playing really well. But in basketball, man, you don't need ten good guys like Nevada has. You really need just three great guys like uh, Duke has, and, and you're you're doing great things. So we're moving on to the final segments of our our little show here we do we do have a little little games for everybody we're going to pause real quick for station identification at 108.9 the snake that's our radio affiliate if you're not listening to us you should be so we have this or that i need one word 
this. I need you to pick one answer. I don't need a, a description with it. Just need one answer from each of you, and we'll move through these pretty quickly. If you were starting a college football team, and it, it, we're talking the bad teams, the Kansases, the Rutgers, would you rather have Nick Saban for five years or Lincoln Riley for 20 years? Uh, Lincoln, Lincoln Riley for 20 years. Mike, what about you? Nick Saban. All right, I'll, I'll, give, you, I'll give you one sentence each. Billy, why? I mean, you're going to – the way they, they're moving right now, college football, their free-flowing offense – 20 years of Lincoln Riley? Yeah, I, th- I think we'll outlast five. Buck, what about your point? So, uh, Saban can uh, – he can have those top recruits into a program, and then as soon as you have that – as soon as you have that c- culture of bringing in those five stars, it's easier to get more five stars for the next coach. I, I like Billy's point, but the only reason I'm going to go with Mike on this one is because – and me and Billy talk about this. Aside from that first year he was at Bama, Every year since 08 till today, up until at least the final two or three games of the season, Nick Saban in Alabama was a, a, a championship contender. I don't know if he could do that at a school like Kansas. I, I think it would be a lot harder. But I think in five years he might be able to get you a title. Moving on here. Would, if, you were, if you had an NFL team, would you rather have the Chiefs offense and a, and a horrible defense or the Bears defense and a horrendous offense? Billy, go. Chiefs offense. As long as I can score points, I'm good. All right, Mike. I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna have to go like like on the Bears because I mean sometimes the offense doesn't show up like the like the like the Kansas City Chiefs offense hasn't show showed the last few weeks here. I, I'm gonna give the point to Billy on this. In today's NFL, you're gonna need that offense. You're gonna need at least 30 points every week, and nothing else really matters. All right, if you watch NFL or the NBA or ESPN, you've heard Shaq talking. Which would you rather have, the 2001 Los Angeles Lakers or a current but completely healthy Golden State Warriors? Billy. Golden State Warriors. Mike. I'm going to have to go with the Warriors, too. They're fun to watch when they're healthy. All right. I'm going to give you a case here, Billy and, and Mike, for Zion Williams, both to the extreme. Do you see Zion being more like LeBron James or Anthony Bennett? Anthony Bennett. Mike? Uh, I'm going to have to go with, Le- like, LeBron James, but definitely not, like, the aspect of he is, but, like, the player that LeBron James is. So, for people wondering why I brought up Anthony Bennett on this, I was looking back at some old articles from that 2013 and, or 12 and 13 recruiting class. Anthony Bennett was a 250, 240-pound dunk-on-your-face guy that every college wanted. Now, obviously, he didn't have the highlights that uh, Zion Williams have, but when he got in the NBA, he could not handle his weight, and now he's pretty much an offensive lineman. So uh, it, we, we talk all so much about uh, Zion Williams' athleticism. I think it would be very interesting to see how he continues to balance his muscle and his fat ratio mm-hmm. as he becomes a full-grown adult. All right, guys, last segment here called the BS meter. I'm going to read to you some facts. They're not facts. They're my, my facts. They're just what I'm saying. On a scale of 1 to 10, you're going to tell me how full of crap I am. 1 being I'm speaking absolute truth. 5 being get out of here with that. So 1 through 5, I'm going to read you a statement. You guys tell me where I'm at. Jalen Hurts will return to Alabama for his senior year. Billy. Uh, I'm going to go 1. Mike? Uh, I, I'm, I am 3. I think he's kind of up, up in the air of what he wants to do. Understandable. I think the last game really kind of weighed that on his mind. If he hadn't been needed in the conference championship, I think it'd be much easier. But if he's kind of needed, I think it's going to be interesting. Drew Brees retires at the end of this season, no matter how it ends. Mike. Oh, uh, that's five. I think he's coming back for at least three or four more years. Billy. Yeah, I got five. I think he sees what Tom's doing. No way. Houston Rockets will miss the NBA playoffs. Billy. Whew, I'm going to go three on that one because uh, I don't know. They're up in the air. Mike, uh, they they did win last night, so I'm going to have to go with the two. Uh, but that was a crazy game. Yeah, but they're still below 500, and I believe they're last in the West still behind the Spurs. This is the last year of the one and done, Billy. Um, I'm going to go three on that. 
uh, especially with this new rule where, you know, these guys get to go to the D League or whatever, G League, whatever it's called now, for like a hundred grand for that year of college, I think more guys are going to be looking to get paid. Mike, I'm going to say, one, I think this is the last year of the one and done. Okay. College football will have an 18 playoff by 2020, Mike. You, you said 18? 18, yes. Yeah, I I say that's a, probably a, a two. Uh, I think it's, I think it's going to happen. Billy? I got it as a five. I don't see that happening. They, they have, they've already said there's been no talks about it. Uh, expanding past four. I don't think, I don't think so. Carson Wentz will never win a Super Bowl as a starter, Billy. I think that's a one. I, I, I believe that. Mike. Ooh. You know, I think I'm, I'm going to have to go with a one as well. Las Vegas will get an NBA franchise before Seattle, Mike. Uh, I'm going to have to go with a four. I, I think Seattle's a hot market right, right now because they, they, they did just get a hockey team too, so. Billy, you said an NBA, a NBA yeah, team. Yeah. They'll get an NBA uh, franchise. Yeah. No, no, I think that's, I think that's a five. Seattle, there's always been talks about bringing this, the Sonics back. So I think that's, I think that's going to happen. Uh, and on a side note, I do think there's somewhat. I don't know. With Adam Silver seems to be doing all the right things. I feel like he, he feels like he owes it to the city of Seattle to bring yep. the 31st franchise there if it ever happens. Yeah. Final one here. There will be three ACC teams in this year's Final Four. Billy. Uh, I'm going to go three. I, we can go two, uh, maybe a third or, or a fourth, but uh, I'm going to go, a, I'm, I'm gonna go a, a two. two. Mike, I think it's a five. I, I, I don't really see any ACC teams making it. Okay, then that, that's, that is it for <laughs> our BS meter. I, we're not going to touch on that one on this show because that will be a whole another 10-minute conversation. Before we wrap up and get to you guys, I have been brewing on something. I've been uh, there's been a there's been a rant a rant inside me that has just been sealed in. It's been brewing over the last couple of weeks. Um, I think Billy Billy was a part of it when you guys were talking about Jalen Ramsey. Some things came out over the weekend that really just it just really cranked up this the the boiler in me. And I am tired. It, look, I love sports as much as the next guy. We all three here equally love sports. They're entertaining. It's a great thing to watch, but we have to stop holding our athletes to such a, a high standard. And I'm not talking about in the community or, or what they do as people. Like, obviously, if they're out here committing crimes, they need to be punished just like anyone else. But to expect them, and Billy and, and Mike had a little heated discussion, to expect them to be different than we are in our daily lives is absurd. You, I, I don't know many people who go to work and give a thousand percent every day, every second, day before a holiday, day after vacation. I don't know anyone that does. It. We expect it from our, our, our NFL players, our NBA players. We never, never call in, never do it. We, I don't know how many people would turn down a six-figure-a-year job or, or turn down an easier position or a position that would make our lives easier for the sake of our legacy. I don't know how many people would would expect an apology if I went back. Billy, if I went back on your social media to when you were 12 and 13 years old, if there was anything, I'm probably going to find something you're not proud of. Why, oh, are yeah. we, why are we holding our athletes to that standard as if they can't be kids? In college, the way, the way people ridicule these college kids are ridiculous. They're 18 year old. Do not hold me to accountability. Uh, I, I God, I hope no one ever judges me for what I did when I was 18. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't the best me. It wasn't the best I could have ever been. That's why we grow. It, if, if someone come to me at work today and said, Hey, you can do exactly what you're doing, but be much more successful and work half as hard. I'm going. And I don't think anybody's going to call me a snake. They're going to call me smart. So every time I turn on sports, it seems like some we are somebody is trying to hold a kid, typically a kid, or at least somebody under twenty five, to a higher level of accountability than they would ever hold themselves. And to me, that is absurd. And to me, that is very frustrating. 
to me, when, or maybe not even, not even sports stars, it's celebrities too. Kevin Hart had the same treatment. This whole thing with Kyler Murray just has me ranting in circles to myself. I don't even need a show. I don't even need an audience. Just the fact that, oh, when you were 14, you were having fun with your friends and you said some things that other 14-year-olds were saying. But because you're a celebrity now, we're going to drag this out. Because this is potentially the best, the most su- successful moment in your life to this point, the day you win the Heisman, we are going to drag you down with this. It's absurd. It's pathetic. I'm, I wish that I had the, the technological smarts to go to these people's social medias, the people who are sharing Tyler Murray's old tweets, and pull up things they said when they were 14 and 15. And then hold them accountable. Send it to their bosses. I guarantee you they're changing their tone. I guarantee you they're saying, oh, it's not that bad. Oh, I guarantee you they're saying, oh, those are just lyrics to a song. Or that's just a friend. But just because it's Kyler Murray, it's a face we see on TV, it's someone who's successful, or Josh Allen last year, we're going to share it, bring it down, and I want them held accountable today. That is, to me, that is, that is pathetic. And it, it almost makes you want to stop watching sports for a little bit. But that's just my rant for today. So I'm, I'm yeah. collecting my breath here. Anybody, any of you two got any closing thoughts? I think you said it. Yeah, I concur with that 100%, man. All right, guys. I hate to, hate to bog down. A really nice show. I mean, it started out, started out heavy. I knew it was going to with, uh, with Mike being so passionate about his Chiefs last night. We're going to end it pretty heavy with that thought. But I thought it was a great show. It's, it's awesome to have Billy back. Um, I felt like me and Mike carried the torch, but I felt like when all three of us are together, it's just a better show. So thanks for joining us. Before we head out, Mike, tell them where they can find us. Guys, we're on iTunes, Google Google Podcast, uh, Spotify, and YouTube as well. Be sure to uh, subscribe and leave a ranking. All right, absolutely. Billy, welcome back. I felt like we should have had a piano playing me out like it was a church when, when, when I'm rolling. <laughs> but uh, I, I, I got you. <laughs> all right. Thank you. All right. We're going to wrap it up. We're going to wrap it up, guys. Thanks for joining us. Tune in Sunday for our NFL special. Uh, we're out. Go Chiefs still. <laughs>